everyone, my name is Tamara Chambers, and this is Tamara's Never Seen. Anytime I put one of these episodes out, and people are like, how did you not see that? It was running every day on TV. It's like, I don't know, man, I, just, I never saw it. This, though, I feel like this, I, <laughs> I should have caught at some point. Today, I'm watching It's a Wonderful Life. I'm excited, though. It's been a hot second since I've seen a movie that I really loved and was like very feel good. So I'm hoping that's this. I'm hoping this puts me super into the holiday spirit and I'm very excited. Oh yeah. in my mind that I'm not going to like older films. I don't know if this was remade with color, I'm sure it was at some point, but I watched it in black and white. I'm always so worried that I'm going to find older films boring. Anything earlier than the 80s, I'm just like, oh my god. Did they have TV back then? It's interesting too that the setup is so long in this movie. It takes so long into it until you get to the actual, like, plot kind of of the film this poor guy george bailey goes through so many trials and tribulations and then you get to the end and the a a alien the angel <laughs> and, and and it's like wow i mean we have 20 minutes left this is so weird what an odd way to do it and for some reason it works for me mostly it's jimmy stewart playing george bailey he is so good i actually know someone named george bailey should be in this. They were legends of the asphalt. They helped create a billion dollar industry. But one man was keeping it old school. This summer, prepare. Ugh. Oh, he's right when I'm trying to record. Hello? Hi, John Bailey. How are you? I had no idea you were in It's a Wonderful Life. And I love your character as George Bailey. And he's, uh, he's great. He's got a very distinct voice. Like, I always knew you had, but I just ha I had no idea. No, this is not... It's John Bailey. I'm not George Bailey. Do you think we're the same person? I don't really pay attention to names or faces in these reaction videos, or ever. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this review, but uh, talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye bye now. We're really good friends. The true standout star to me, though, is Donna Reed. She is a queen in this film. She single-handedly saves the family multiple times. She's a wonderful partner. She's like a badass mother who's like renovating their whole home and constantly is saving the town and their marriage and I love her character. The story takes place and it's the life of George Bailey and he's a wonderful, wonderful human and he's done incredible things for the town that he lives in. And it starts off and he saves his brother single-handedly from dying in this icy cold water in the winter time and it's just, what a way to start the film. Hi John. I had no idea you saved your little brother. That's incredible. I don't have a little brother. Ugh, we're not the same person. You know George Bailey is fictional, right? Ugh, I don't think you understand film, like, at all. Oh, that's cool. Well, I'll talk to you soon, bye. Then he's shown saving someone's life because the pharmacist he works for was gonna put poison on accident in some of the capsules that he was sending out. George Bailey, as a character, is a true hero. John Bailey, you are a true hero. Really? Are we still doing this? Okay. All right. Talk to you soon, buddy. Bye-bye. Go, go, go to bed. Go to bed. Oh. Stupid call me in the middle of the night. Then it fast forwards and he's about to embark on this big trip to go exploring before he goes off to college. And there's a wonderful point where he sees this lady in town who has a big crush on him named Violet. And he's like, Violet, that's a nice dress. And she's like, what? <laughs> this old thing? Well, I only put it on when I don't care what I look like. Then she walks away and every single person stares at her as she goes down the street. It's a different time. The true love of his life, even though he doesn't know it yet, is Mary, played by Donna Reed. So Mary Hatch and George Bailey go out on a date and it's so cute, it sparks the romance. She's so head over heels for him and I just love what he says to her about the moon. Hold. Hey John. <laughs> Pickles. Oh, jeez. 
What is it you want, Tamara? Is there any way that you could do the moon monologue that you say to Mary Hatch in the film? I would love it. It's my favorite part. What do you want? You want the moon? You say the word and I'll throw a lasso around and pull it down for you. Hey, that's a good idea. I'll give you the moon, Tamara. Merry Christmas, Bedford Falls! Okay. All right. Okay, goodbye, George Bailey. Oh no, George's dad died. Oh no, he gave up his Europe trip. Oh no, he gave up college too. Oh no, Mary's back and he's not calling her. She has the painting of the moon and the lasso, and she has the song that they were singing on their first date playing, and he doesn't appreciate any of it. The sexual tension in the telephone scene, oh my god. I could watch that to put myself in the mood every night. It is that, woo, woo. Oh, JK, he's so mad. Oh, JK, he's kissing her. Oh, JK, they got married, oh! Then I wrote, okay, well, Mary just gave all of her honeymoon money for the town, selfless queen. If George Bailey didn't marry her, I would. <laughs> this is when things really start ramping up. You find out that Uncle Billy has lost, is his name Uncle Billy? That's a terrible name. Oh God, Uncle Billy. Uncle Billy has lost $8,000 and the bank is now, that's like all of the money that the bank has. And everyone's gonna like go to jail and lose their homes and everything is trash. But Uncle Billy has a ton of animals and he's got a pet squirrel and I think that's pretty dope. So, it's fine. George is super stressed about it. He's such a good guy who's done everything by the rules, everything by the book, and he ends up very drunk and then he ends up on the side of a bridge where he's about to jump to his death. It's actually a moment that really touched me. It just shows how you can really get so frantic about something and care so much about something and feel so helpless with it. It felt so honest and true and I was watching it just like tearing up because this guy is like, he's gonna jump off this bridge and it's so well acted and the story made so much sense. They built it up with so much time and it felt right that it's just, I mean, oh my God. But then Clarence jumps and he goes and he helps Clarence instead and Clarence is a Christmas spirit ghost or like a guardian angel, whatever you wanna call Clarence. But Clarence is, Clarence is also dope. <laughs> Using dope a lot. That was a terrible sentence. That's not what I meant. I mean, I'm using the word dope a lot. I'm not using dope a lot, just a little. George wishes that he had never been born and Clarence proceeds to show him what the town and everyone else's life would be like if he hadn't been born. A lot of things were different. The name of the town, a couple people had died, I think. People weren't around anymore. The pharmacist he had helped, his brother had died. Just everything was way different. His mom was sad. The funniest thing to me was when he went to Clarence and he's like, where's Mary? What happened to Mary? And Clarence is like, well, you're not gonna wanna hear this. He's like, tell me! <laughs> She's an old maid. She never married, and she works at a library. Ba, ba, ba. Oh no! He's like, just take me back, please take me back. I need my my family and all blah 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 blah. And it was just the most incredible acting. He sees Mary, and that's just when like water works, and she just saves the day again. The whole town comes, they all celebrate, they have way more money than they need, his brother comes home from war, he's a war hero, and it just ends in the most beautiful, stunning way. Also, Bert and Ernie were in this. <laughs> I was reading the predictions right now for this, and I saw a lot of you are saying that you haven't seen it either. Definitely see this. Who am I to tell you to see something? But definitely, if you can, this holiday season, watch this movie. You'll cry. Prediction over. <laughs> yep. So many people predicted correctly that I was going to cry. You'll be seeing Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight, come out tonight. Buffalo gals, won't you tell us done? All the live long day. Nope, nope, lost it. Thank you so much for watching this, you guys. And whether you celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or just sitting on your couch drinking a beer, <laughs> happy holidays for me. I will see you all next week. Hey again. Hi Tamara. This is getting old. Oh my god, I'm Tamara. I didn't like Scrooge and I like cats. Where's Ike? Leave me alone.
Merry Christmas.